The following program is video supplemental instruction. VSI is brought to you by the Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu. Okay, number three, uh, we're doing a function composition problem, so we're given two functions f and g. We want to find f of g of x. So remember that written in function notation, f of g of x is, can be written like this in nested notation. I find this a little bit easier to look at because this is more clear that you take the function g of x and you plug it into f. So with our f being square root of x and g being x plus 5 over x minus 1, what we're going to be doing here is we're going to taking we're going to be taking this whole x plus five over x minus one and plugging it in instead of the x for f. So then we get our f of g to be square root of the whole fraction x plus five over x minus one. So we want to find this and its domain. Well, just from that you can get rid of a lot of answer choices here. A, B, and E all have the incorrect function. So now we just need to figure out its domain. Well, remember that when you do function composition, domain of your original interior function matters as well as what the domain is of your composition. So we do have to look at g by itself, and the only thing that g had was that x can't equal 1. Well, we still have that x can't equal 1 in our composition because the denominator there uh, would be 0. So that's fine. We don't really have to worry about it then. It's possible, though, that once you simplified something here, uh, an original domain problem could have disappeared, and if that's the case, it still actually matters, so you need to be careful about that. But let's just work with this now and find out the domain. We know that x plus 5 over x minus 1 has to be greater than or equal to 0 because it's in a square root. So we do a similar thing that we did for number 1. We can set up a number line now. And our key points this time are 1 and negative 5 because those are the zeros of the numerator and denominator. All we need to do now is check our ranges to see if we get a positive or negative result. Bigger than 1, we get positive, positive. Uh, somewhere in between negative 5 and 1, like 0, we get positive, negative. And something smaller than negative 5, we get negative, negative, so we get positive. Lastly, we need to check the endpoints. Negative 5 is okay because this was a greater than or equal to, so this is a closed circle. 1 is definitely not okay because we would be dividing by 0. So now if we write the, that in interval notation, we're going to get negative infinity up to negative 5 with a bracket. And we're going to have 1 to infinity with a parentheses on 1 because that was an open circle there. So that, of course, then leads us to answer choice D. The Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu.